Hoi jylle, welkom terug by Intiem, dit is so lekker dat jylle soms ons keier, ek het een ongelooflike verrassing vir jylle, ons gaan praat oor wholeness met Mads Dysel. Hallo jylle. Dit is die meeste Afrikaans wat sy het. <laughs> <laughs> so die video is in Engels, maar ek wil jou rarig aanmoedig om het te kyk, want het gaan praat met jou oor jou eie jylheid, oor jou journey, oor wat die effect die hevelik en jou hevelik kan hee op hierdie reis waarop jy is. Ek gaan ook vir jou e-mailadres onder los van Mads. Jy moet in Engels skryf as jy vir briefie skryf, maar jy kan hierdie halne skools, um, kan jy in die hande kry. Het is een ongelooflike ding om dier te werk. Ek was op die kursus som met Mads en het het een massieve inpak in my leven gehad. En in ons hevelik vir my en Nico som, ons was som op die kursus, so dit was ongelooflik. Alleen de lat Mads. Dankie. Um, so, ons gaan in hierdie video, gaan ons baie goed met jou deel. So, bly in die geskakel. Have you ever thought why you're thinking, behaving and feeling the way you do and how that impacts on your marriage? We have got such an amazing video for you today and welcome here and thank you for, for joining us. Thank you for your time. This is going to change your life. I want to introduce you to Mads Dysel. Hello there. Mads, um, I, I, I went to a course recently and Mads do this. She does the wholeness course. Um, she's a mum, she's a surfer, she's a rock star, but she's a pastoral counsellor. Yes. Yes. <laughs> she's a pastoral counsellor and she's going to help you understand what wholeness is all about. So welcome Mads. Thank you very much for having me here. You've been doing this for a while? About 13 years now, yes. And is that, does it have a massive impact on people and the way they think, their relationships? A hundred percent, you know, my heart is to, is to help churches nationally uh, be equipped so that we can have more effective conversations Absolutely. and helping people with their stories. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's start at the beginning. Yes. What is emotional wholeness? What is spiritual wholeness? What is this whole wholeness concept that we're talking about? I think to answer that, we need to go back to the beginning of the story. Um, okay. Genesis 1 and 2 paints this amazing picture. It gives us the blueprint of what it means to be in a right relationship with God. We see this intimate relationship that Adam and Eve had. They knew they were loved, they were created yes. in God's image, they knew they had a purpose, God had placed them intentionally in the garden, and they knew they had value because they experienced that in the context of their relationship with each other and with God. And Genesis 2.28 ends saying the man and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. So there was this deep awareness around the security of who they were because of the relationship they had with God. So to answer the question of what does it mean to have mm. spiritual and emotional wellness, it's to know your identity in God and your relationship with Him. And that spills out onto the psychological elements of myself, my thinking, feeling and behaving. It's all intertwined. Shame is such an interesting emotion because it's, a, it's an identity crippling emotion. You know, guilt is I made a mistake, yes. shame is I am a mistake. Oh, wow. But Adam and Eve That's big. felt... Can you, can you just say yes. that again? Okay, so... The difference between shame and guilt. So guilt is I made a mistake. Shame is I am a mistake. Wow. Okay. But scripture says that they had no shame. So there was this picture of this intimate connection with each other and God. And there was the stability in knowing who they were. And to me, that is what spiritual and emotional wellness is all about. So the impact of the fall, yes. what impact did that have on us psychologically? Okay. So we also need to be aware that there was an enemy okay. who didn't want us to stay in that intimate relationship with God. So he comes into the story in Genesis 3. He uses three techniques, doubt, lies, and temptations. Because he wanted us to falsely believe that we could become God of our own lives, that we didn't need God. Okay. So Adam and Eve believe him, they, they are they kind of sidelined by him, they eat the fruit, and scripture says immediately they became aware of their nakedness and now they feel shame. Oh, okay. So shame now is this identity crippling emotion. And when we feel shame from a psychological perspective, we want to immediately cover up. We yes. want to hide. Yes. You don't have to teach a kid when it makes a mistake. So if you mess up, run and hide. It's instinctual in our human nature. So we see what Adam and Eve do is they cover themselves with fig leaves. 
and they run and they hide from God. Mm. God then comes looking for them, but they are no longer able to hear God through the same lens anymore. They're now hearing Him through the lens of shame. So even their ability to see God and understand who God is has been has been shifted because of the shame lens. And so we psychologically want to cover up and hide. And it leaves us now with a thirst. Yes. Because if my starting point is knowing I'm loved, knowing I have value, knowing I have purpose, now because of this disconnect from God, our starting point is insecurity, insignificance, and inferiority. It creates a massive thirst in the heart of us as human beings where we're constantly seeking to try and get these crucial needs met. Yes. Can, can my marriage meet these? So we, we're talking marriage. Whenever we're on this platform, we're talking marriage. And now, when I did this course with Maz, what I realized is my wholeness has got an impact on my marriage. And my question was, can my marriage help me to be whole because I'm looking to my husband for a lot of those needs to feel valued, mm -hmm. to feel that I have a purpose, mm -hmm. to feel loved. So that's the question. Can Point. it? So I think we falsely think it can, especially in the romantic phase. Okay. We're that's in love. True. Yes. Okay. We're in love and suddenly now I'm feeling loved. I feel like I've got a purpose in my life, my role in my marriage. I feel like I have value because of the connection I have with my spouse. And so in those early stages, and actually statistics say that it can last, that in love phase can last anywhere from three minutes to three years. Oh, wow. So, I'm hoping for the three years. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> and so in a sense, when I'm in love, it creates this false reality that my needs are, my needs are completely being met. Until we start to shift out of that in love phase, where we then start to move into what we call the power struggle phase. Now, those crucial needs, most of us are not consciously aware of them, but they drive everything yes. we do. So now um, I'm hoping my spouse is going to behave in ways that's going to reaffirm that I'm loved, that's going to reaffirm that I have value in his eyes. But he's on his own mission, or she's on her own mission, trying to get her needs met, and that's why it becomes this power struggle yes. around whose needs are more important. And interesting enough, the person who's least emotionally needy is the one that generally wins the power struggle. That's interesting. So if I'm least emotionally needy of you, I can cut off myself from my emotions and almost disconnect myself from you so I can win the power struggle. We see that a lot. And so often couples falsely think that I need my spouse to meet the deepest need of my heart and when they don't, that there's something wrong with me fundamentally. And a yes. lot of people struggle with this idea that there must be something too broken in me that even my spouse can't meet the need. Oh, and we that see that is. a lot here, 100%. If you haven't taken notes, please watch this video again because we've talked about wholeness, mm -hmm. emotional wholeness, yeah. what that means. Yes. We talked about the fall in, in, in the Garden of Eden and in Genesis pre-fall and post-fall. But I want to ask you, just before I end the video, um, Matt, aren't we still every day making those choices? So I've often I've looked at, at the story of Adam and Eve and I'm thinking that's their story. Mm -hmm. Is that also my story? 100%. Every single human being on this earth is wanting to answer three questions. Am I loved? Do I have purpose? And what is my value? Wow. And we need to understand why every single human being. This is regardless of race, age, religions, it doesn't matter. Everyone is driven by the same three crucial needs. The reason being is because scripture says very clearly we were created in His image. So it's almost like God has put His thumbprint onto our hearts. And that thumbprint is the need to be in intimate relationship with Him, where we get the fullness of those needs met through my relationship with Him. But most people who don't know who God is, or maybe haven't got that intimate relationship, don't know that He's the source, but they still have that imprint, because we yes, were created by absolutely. Him. We're just trying to find it in other spaces. Yeah, that makes so much sense. Um, in the next video, we're going to talk more about these needs, so don't miss that one. In the meantime, if you want to get hold of maths, um, and you want to get hold of this 
hold of this wholeness course. Can can they actually yes. get a download of this? They can. We do have it in a digital digital video digital download. Um, so you can email me for those details. So you've yes. got a digital download on yes. there. So I'll leave a link down below that you can actually get in touch with Mads. Yes. And I think the next video we're going to talk about these needs. But this is crucial for you to watch. It can change your life. It really can. And we've gone through this course ourselves and it's made a massive impact on the way that I think and the, the way that we act in our marriage. So we'll see you next time.